Okay, so now that we have helped out Honest. this farmer here, or I don't know if we've really helped him, but he now works for the defamed. Um, verse, slow down a moment. I know we're both eager to watch the Archons bicker over tactics like a pair of magpies, but I need to ask you scum something first. Okay, what's that? The voices of Narot told me you've come as a mediator. Considering the source, well, I can't help but feel I'm only hearing half the story. So let's have it out. What's so special about you? A lie. I'm actually tallying the expense of the siege. Okay, uh, I'm here to deliver an edict from Kairos. I have nothing to tell you. Why so suspicious? And what else has the voices of Narat told you? Yeah, what else have they told you? Only that I could find you in Edgering Ruins. Truthfully, I could have picked you out of a crowd. You're the only one of us who hasn't spent the last few months bathing in the stink of the Matina River. Uh, she laughs, but there's a forced nature to it. Um, I'm here to deliver an edict from Kairos. Yeah, that, there's no need to lie to her. Uh, so I've gained loyalty with her. That makes a crazy kind of sense, considering how long the siege has taxed the armies. I can understand why Kairos would send you with an edict to speed things along. Have you read it? Do you know what it says? Uh, this is not for you to know. The Archons must claim Ascension Hall by Kairos's Day of Swords, or all will perish. What's Ascension Hall? It is the traditional throne room of the Queens of Apex. The throne stands directly beneath the mountain spire in the center of the citadel in the Valley of Vendrian's Well. Okay, and what's the Day of Swords? The 26th of every month or span is Kairos's Day. It is a day of holiday and rest for all within the Overlord's Empire. Each Kairos's Day is the last day of its span and is referred to by the span's name. Kairos's Day of Swords, therefore, is the 26th day of the Span of Swords. Okay, interesting, interesting. So basically, by the end of the year, for what they call it, we need to have claimed Ascension Hall. One more thing for the Archons to fight over. Well, thanks for cluing me in. If Kairos sends any lightning our way, just tell me when to duck. <laughs> Alright, uh, why so su suspicious? Enough of this. I really ought to be meeting with the Archons. Uh, yeah, why why so suspicious? It's just a feeling I got. When the Archons are together, the air gets as taut as a bowstring. I can't help but think that no amount of compromise will get them seeing eye to eye. So why invite a mediator from Tunon's court? It doesn't add up. Uh, okay, so why do you think the Archons are at odds? I've been with the Scarlet Chorus since the early days of the Conquest, so I can say it's been building for a few years now. There's an energy about those two, like a pair of storms moving to collide. I heard tell that Graven Ash and the voices of Neret shared some bad blood in the Northern Empire, but I don't know any of the particulars. That's absurd. If the Archons cannot put the past behind them, they are unfit to command. By my authority, the Archons will fall in line. Hmm... You know what, yeah, if they're going to bicker like children, then maybe they really shouldn't be in charge. <laughs> Quick to anger, are we? I'm not disagreeing with you, but I would take care where you speak your mind. Someone is always eager to report slander to their favorite Archon. With all the power they wield, those types are not quick to forgive. Alright, I really ought to be meeting with the Archons then. The war tent is just past the center of camp. She nods towards the northeast. One last thing, be careful around these disfavored types. They take their work seriously and most have suffered too many blows to the head. Okay, so I will be very careful around them. And it looks like there might be some loot to be had. Oh, if I had some subterfuge. Um, right, so here's the camp that we need to get into. What do we have here? Step closer and present yourselves. Well, look at you. Our gatecrasher from the court is still in one piece. The guard pounds his chest plate in salute. Welcome to disfavored camp. Always happy to have an honored ally pay us a visit. Salute, green ash protects. I'm sorry, but with the helmet, it's hard to tell a face or a glare silently. Yeah, who is Stone Shield? I'm not even sure if we've met. Either way, salute. That he does. The warrior nods in approval, then taps twice on the gate to signal your arrival. Be well, Fate Binder. Glory to Kairos. Okay, so addendum added. Conqueror's Will. 
Uh, Kairos's edict must be personally delivered to the Archons. Find them in the disfavored camp. The two Archons are currently meeting inside Grave and Ash's tent at the north end of camp. All right, who can we talk to in here? Probably everyone. Hail to you, Guardian of the Law. The man dressed in merchant finery greens you, greets you with a smile. If you have a few excess rings weighing you down, best unburden yourself before battle. You know that if the disfavored suffer a merchant in their camp, that, man, that must be a man selling only the finest provisions and armaments. He points to his collection of shields, rations, satchels, wineskins, and other sundries. Take a look and see if something interests you. Um, yeah, let me see your wares. Pentavor rubs his hands, eyes all right. Uh, let's see if we can find something you might like. Okay, now do I have anything I could sell him? Uh, yeah, if I could get rid of these items. Not rings, but just equipment we really don't need. Uh, let's see, topaz. I don't know if things like topaz are going to be important. I'll keep them for now. Uh, but yeah, like these weapons I really don't need. Same with the shield and such. Uh, the weapon. Honor Guard's Brawn Falx. It's a two-handed weapon. Let me keep that for now, actually. Actually, let me compare it to what I currently... It does more DPS, higher range, but I would have to get give up my shield, which is not something that I really want to do, so I'll sell it to him. We can get some money. Um, copper and Bronze. Okay, so that's how it's broken up. That's right, because it's rings, rings. Okay, see, I keep mixing up rings, like the things you put on your hands, with... You know, the money is how they refer to it. Um, now, what do you have in terms of armor? Anything? No. You have weapons. Some ingredients. Champ camping supplies. Oh, okay. Now, what does this do? A bundle of sundries, including linen tarps, hemp rope, flint, hard tack, lantern oil, and other tools and supplies needed to build a proper shelter from the elements. You know what? It's cheap. Let's get uh, six. And there we go. Alright, so currently I have six camping supplies. Very cool. Um, and six bronze rings. Okay, so I'm doing pretty good. Do I have a transaction pending? Oh, oh, okay. So um, let's uh, move those back into his supply since we don't need them. I guess we can only carry six total. Okay. Very good, very good. What is this? The cart is bursting with fresh fruit and useful goods. Okay. Ooh, can we... Oh, we can open this. It's all in the reflexes. <laughs> Potion of elemental barrier, good. And lesser sigil of strength. Very good. Alright, any other supplies we can loot in here, actually? Looks like... Ah, looks like this we can loot. Uh, stone shield boots. I'll take a look at those in a second. Uh, looks like something up here we can take as well. Heavy leather gloves. Okay, let's take a look. Now. Heavy leather gloves are better in almost every way except precision for me. They're better in almost every way for her. But you know what? I think I'll take this and then let's compare for her... Now this is better than what she has. Now the boots, uh, they're pretty good. They'd be better on her though. And there we go. Now we need to speak to... That's Ash's tent. Okay, so that's where I need to be. A meager portion of game simmers in the large copper pot. Fragrant spices attempt to mask the potent smell of whatever creature they've decided to cook. Okay. Looks like there's some loot down here we can get as well. Ah, the weapon rack. Okay, let's see what we got. A bow. Okay, I'll take it. Again, I can just sell it. Alright, we really should get a move on to talk to Graven Ash, though. Yesterday you chide me for wishing to wait, now you suggest an even longer delay. 
Perhaps the voices in your skull ought to come to a consensus if you wish to be taken seriously. Good advice is flexible, changing with the moment. Besides, now we're agreeing with yesterday you, today you should be very happy. We know you hate going into battle without overwhelming odds on your side. If you're so terrified of a challenge, why not wait for your... something. I don't need your heckling, I need your scouting reports. Or better yet, confirmation you quelled the out Oathbreakers in the Outer Valley. Oh that, we will solve it in our own time and way. We must make at least a token effort to show them mercy. Mercy, they have already shat upon our mercy once before. These gutter-born south snobs deserve nothing better. Calm down now, we must leave something to rule, or have you forgotten Kairos' orders? Patience. Whew, you guys gotta talk a little slower, I cannot keep up. <laughs> That's four reports of avalanches in the mountains now. The Tearsmen can barely count past nine. They have neither the capacity nor the cause to close off the mountain passes. Either way... That leaves the second and fourth cohort trapped outside the valley. The Archon of War pounds his staff on the ground to punctuate his words. A large and imposing man to begin with, his profile is made larger still by hul his hulking suit of armor that hums with mystic energy. Or it's the work of your perfidious Earthshakers. Only a fool would not suspect a traitorous Archon of poisoning the mind of his students with sedition. We would have killed the Earthshakers Guild for their master's treachery, but I'm sure you have some perfectly valid reason for allowing them to live as your pawns. The Archon of Secrets passes a scepter between his hands as he speaks, twirling the rod in hypnotic circles. Emerald luminescence seeps from the seams of the Archon's ragged red robes. The glow is most noticeable where his neck ought to be. His mask seems to float and spin, never pivoting or bending naturally. Alright, what is, uh... You hear the voices in your head. Well, hello there, Fatebender. We'll be with you in just a moment. Hey, watch yourself. When these two get going, you don't want to get between them. Verse whispers fearfully as she beholds the Archons. I am here to proclaim Kairos's edict. The valley was sealed in preparation for this moment. Or clear your throat. Yeah, let's get their attention so they're actually listening to me. I always know you've run out of things to say when you resort to mocking my vassals. If we are to speak of treachery, why is it that my scouts see the Scarlet Chorus warriors defecting back to the Vendrian Guard? Your fearsome reputation has gone flaccid, for it seems you cannot control your soldiers. Or perhaps you simply choose not to. Oof, these two are not getting on well, are they? My lords, the fate bender has arrived. The disfavored commander raises her voice, trying with little success to speak over the Archons. Perhaps we could table this discussion and let our guest speak. Speaking of strategic failures, who was it that insisted the valley would need only a token garrison? Hmm? For some strange reason, we can't seem to recall which balding half would grossly underestimated the enemy. Thoughts? The Archon of Secrets twirls his scepter in a twisting loop, his leather-wrapped hands flipping the heavy rod with effortless flow. You hear the voices in your head. Can you hear us, face bent, face, Fate Binder? Cough if we have your attention. Let's cough. I'm curious to see where this is going. And I thought you had left agents within these Tearsmen when they surrendered. Either you failed to see this coming, or you knew and let it happen. Incompetent or in cahoots, either way, this mess has your filthy stink all over it. The Archon of War lurches forward, resting his weight on his war mole as blue luminescence crackles around his armor. We look forward to seeing you explain to Tunan why the Archon of War could not close the vice on this trivial little insurgency. When we are crowned the ruler of the tears, we shall have this place renamed to Ash's Folly. In your honor. The voices of Neret tosses his scepter into the air, catching it as it descends back down. Good, good, now pay attention. You might miss something. Interesting. Uh, yeah, so then I guess I'll remain silent. If I could trust the information I get from you and your conscripted mouth breathers, perhaps I'd order my cohorts around a bit more aggressively. But last time I trusted your all-clear report, my troops failed to come home. Oh, Ash, old boy. 
If you're going to have a little sob every time one of your nieces or nephews dies to the tearsman, perhaps we should have Siren sing you some calming lullabies to help you cope with your grief. The Archon flips his scepter three times around, humming gleefully. You hear the voices in your head. Take care that you don't learn too much, Fatebinder. An excess of knowledge, of curiosity even, can earn unwanted attention. Okay, so you're telling me that I shouldn't be going around asking a whole bunch of questions, huh? Hold your tongue. I will not have you denigrate the honor of our fallen brethren. The commander's hand moves to the hilt of her blade, though the weapon stays sheathed. I'd be doing us all a favor if I crack open that excuse for a head. Ooh. Fifth eye. They bicker like children, do they not? The fifth eye's grating tenor pierces the tension in the tent, and all eyes land on the crimson spear. I uh, meant only to say welcome. Welcome to our guest, the fate binder. The armored retainer bows with rushed inelegance, then rises to a salute, and not a moment too soon. You've gained favor with Graven Ash and the Disfavored. Governor Ishvel, long have we been honored by your iron. Now we are honored by your presence. I must apologize for my lord's temper runs high of late. Bow to the Archons. Apologies for the sudden entrance. I've traveled long to be here. Uh, I'm not able to be di diplomatic. Glare silently. Huh? These two are... Well, they're not my boss. <laughs> but uh, they do command a certain amount of respect around here, so... I'll just bow to them and I'll be polite. I'm just here to tell them about the edicts. Ah, the fire starter has arrived! Welcome, welcome! Our agents tell us such lovely stories of what you did at the Vellum Citadel. Have you come bearing another fragment of Kairos's wrath in tow? My soldiers tell me you helped Commander Drotus on your way through Edring. You honor the court with your selfless cooperation. For that is the sort of camaraderie that Kairos demands of us all. On the last of his words, the Archon of War glares at the voices of Nerat, fur furrowing his brow as he utters the word camaraderie. I require no thanks for doing my sworn duty. I come bearing an edict of Kairos. Are you all done bickering? I have an edict to proclaim. Um, yeah, I come- I'm just gonna flat out say it before they cut me off again and get into another argument. I come bearing an edict of Kairos. Once again, you bring us support in a time of need. We fondly remember your service to the Chorus in the taking of the Bastard City. We knew back then you were destined for great things. But we had not anticipated you would be twice honored with the task of proclamation. So, do not keep us waiting. What is the Overlord's will? The Overlord's loyal servants must hold Ascension Hall by Kairos' Day of Swords, or all in the valley shall perish. It seems you need some encouragement to work together. Kairos' edict will end the lives of everyone in this valley unless Ascension Hall is claimed by Kairos' Day of Swords. In honor of your incompetence and disarray, the edict will execute every living thing in this valley unless Ascension Hall is taken by Kairos' Day of Swords. Interesting. Should we tell them they need some encouragement to work together? I'm wondering if these two are too thick to get that this edict is because they refuse to work together. Um, yeah, it seems you two need some encouragement. You've gained wrath with the voices of Nerot and favor with Graven Ash. <laughs> I don't know, uh, Graven, that was kind of aimed at you as well. The earth sways with each word you utter, the air thickening with warmth as you pronounce the tersely phrased commandment. It's every syllable drafted by the hand of Kairos. With the edict proclaim, your pulse quickens and the muscles in your legs, worn from a long trip down the mountains, feels renewed, the tired limbs now nearly buoyant with vigor. The Overlord means to compel us into action. No doubt the avalanches in the mountains are part of this ultimatum. We must conquer the Oathbreakers or die in failure. There is no room for error, and no other way out of this valley alive. We'll need to advance across the Matani. We lose everything if we stand still. And we move to back up Plan Green. The Earthshakers didn't make it over the mountain in time. So we do this the hard way. Over the walls, instead of through. 
The Archon of War taps a finger against his temple. A low rumble escapes from under his beard. So you found your backbone at last! <laughs> oh, we were worried past humiliations would make you soft, timid. That was a record for you, right? The Baker's Dozen lost in one sortie. If you had waited for the chorus reinforcements, maybe we'd have eyes and ears on the matter. The Archon of Secrets passes his scepter from one hand to the next, chuckling softly with each toss. You hear the voices in your head. Watch him squirm, so many tears over replaceable, expendable, useless soldiers. I miss the old Archon of War. You'd never see blood echo in a blubbering mess over a few dead killers. He'd just... He'd use the knuckle bone of his best disciples for jewelry, and even made a breastplate out of his dead brother's ribcage, because that's how a real man de deals with grief. Um, I'm not quite sure that's true. Um, bicker all you wish, you're just wasting valuable time. Are you too daft? It is your indecision and bickering that necessitized this edict. Learn to work together or we're all doomed. Or subterfuge, they call you the Archon of Secrets, but you certainly don't seem to know anything remotely useful. Ooh, yeah, that would, uh, that would not put me in good favor with them. Yeah, let's just tell it to him straight. Learn to work together, or we're all dead. The Fate Binder is right. We're acting not as leaders, but as children. I've no time for your foolish japes and petty taunts. We should focus on the objective at hand. And that is taking the Matani River, and then advancing to Ascension Hall and ending this edict. Then enough talking, there's work to be done. Our lives hang in the balance because you two bicker like children. Now go, solve this problem you have started. No more sitting idle, I expect the disfavored to be on the march at once. Voices of Neret, I trust you are done acting the clown and will have your horde ready to march with all haste. Um... Our lives hang in the balance because you two bicker like children. No, you know what? They're they're finally starting to get ready to work together. Let's not insult anyone. We're done talking. Let the work begin. My lord, Beric and his band have been drilled on the Echo Call assault plan. The Crescent Runners should be briefing him as we speak regarding the latest enemy movements along the river. I will dispatch him at once. The Iron Marshal salutes, clapping her gauntlet to her breastplate. And I will ensure the chorus stands ready to march. If the disfavored can take the river, the chorus has the manpower to secure the outer ring of the valley. Our soldiers clamor for battle, and at last we shall have it. Verse, we command you to continue guarding the Fate Binder. Tunan's chosen is our honored guest, and must be shown our finest hospitality. I won't let you down, boss. He'll get through the campaign in one piece. As long as he doesn't do anything too stupid. I can't guarantee that. The Archon twirls his scepter one last time, then taps the fifth eye on his shoulder, and the two depart. The, you hear the voices in your head. Suit yourself, Fatebinder. The more you ignore us... Um, I don't know. I, I didn't think I was ignoring you. I was listening to everything he said. Um... Hmm. Okay, let's end that conversation then. I have a feeling the Voices of Nera is going to be one of the most difficult Fine. people to please. The fool and his puppet are gone. Perhaps now I can hear myself think. Rarely do I question Kairos' judgment. But I will never understand why the Voices of Narat is given such authority. I shudder to think what will become of us all should Tunon favor him in the end. Though the Edict threatens the Scarlet Chorus just as it threatens us, I cannot shake the feeling that our allies will work against us. But at least we have allies in the court. My best soldiers have never wanted for a good blade or suit of armor, and I know I have you to thank for it. I fear we will have to call on you for more than just a few works of iron. Now, if you'll leave me be, I have a battle to plan. I imagine duty requires you speak with the chorus further, but if I can convince you to lend a hand, most of my legion is trapped beyond the mountains, so I'm in need of an added sword or two. If you wish to be counted amongst the glorious, speak with the Iron Marshal. She will direct the order of battle until we are ready for the final push into the Citadel. 
I'm short a few scouts, short a few soldiers, short a few everything. I'm sure my brethren would be grateful for the assistance of a skilled outsider. I would be honored to help. And what of the Scarlet Chorus? How will they be helping? I'm curious. I ask myself that question often. While we take the river crossing, the Scarlet Chorus should be using their sizable presence to remove the Oathbreaker patrols lurking in the outer valley. The Oathbreakers have maintained a sizable force outside the Citadel. We need the Chorus's manpower to scour the region. Otherwise, the Oathbreakers will attack at our heels once we cross the Matani. I would be honored to help. Gained favor with the disfavored. The Iron Marshal salutes Graven Ash, then turns to leave the tent. I will be at the training grounds, readying the soldiers. Find me there when you are ready. She pauses, clearing her throat. And though I am loath to mention it, the chorus can likely use your assistance. They certainly won't secure the outer valley on their own. Fifth Eye will be somewhere in that rat's nest they call a camp, due east. Seek them out if you must. Okay, so it looks like we have finally got them to somewhat, tentatively, agree to work together. Uh, but now we're going to be helping out the Disfavored and the Scarlet Chorus. We're going to be doing what we can to get them on track, and then we're going to try and take over this area that they need before the end of the year, basically. <laughs>